Books, 18 books. Baba. Oh, that's an old bio. And the most recent of which are my book of Africa. What is the recent one? One, one, one. Most recent book is called Black and Beautiful in the Ancient World. It's really a photo book. And it has a lot of the photographs that I'm gonna try to use tonight. So that's my most recent work. That's an old bio. I think I've written I edited 21 books now, so, but it's an honor to be with you, yeah. Well, yeah, so we're going to have to update that bio, put the 21. So without any other ado, all the people that's been in Peru, you want to big up your friends in Peru, they're watching. <laughs> Our family, last year we were in Peru together, Baba. Well, greetings, everyone. Yeah, I know. And we would have been there again this year. But this pandemic, you know, who could have foreseen it and the struggle for racial justice in the United States. So I would like to think that what we're doing is a, a part of that struggle. Now, I've been sheltering in place for four months now, and I never thought I would be in a situation like this, but I'm learning to use Zoom. It looks like it's a thing for, for a while. And this is my first serious Zoom presentation. So I'm a little bit nervous, but hopefully it'll go well. Uh, the ancestors uh, are in our corner. And mostly what I'm gonna do for about 35 or 40 minutes is just show some photographs. So let me see if I can share the screen. Okay. And we'll go from there. Now, can you see this image right here? Yes. All right, this is Lucia. And Lucia is important to us because she's recognized as the first person of the Americas, not the first black person, not the first African, but the first person to inhabit the Western hemisphere. And this is a reconstruction of a skull found in Brazil in the 1980s. In fact, this skull was in the Natural History Museum in, um, uh, in Rio de Janeiro when they had the big fire a couple years ago and apparently the skull survived. It's about, 11,000, 13,000 or so years old. And I wanted to start with that. We're talking about the African presence in Latin America. And it's a three-part series, so we're able to break it up and look at the African presence at the dawn of the Western Hemisphere, at the dawn of what we call today Latin America, particularly the role of African people in classical civilizations. And that is what I'm gonna try to talk about tonight. You can still see the images, they are clear. 
You can see the head? Yes, got it. Looks All right, looks now what we're gonna, the major thing we're gonna look at tonight in our brief sojourn is the uh, Olmec civilization. That's the big deal. The Olmec civilization is important to us because it's the first great civilization in the Western hemisphere. We could even call it a parent civilization before the Inca, the Aztec, the Toltec, the Moche, any of them, you had a civilization called the Olmec, O-L-M-E-C. And at the hierarchy of the Olmec world was a group of African people. And that's what we're gonna focus on. But even before the Olmec, you have artifacts like this. Now this is about 1400 BC, 1400 years before the beginning of the common era or Christian era, if you like. It's a very small piece. It's the head of an African. And it's from a place called Guerrero, Mexico. Guerrero is also, and we'll talk about this in the next session, Guerrero, the state of Guerrero is named after a man of African heritage, Vicente Guerrero, who was the second president of Mexico and who abolished slavery in Mexico. So this is found in the state of um, Guerrero, and it's about 1400 BC. But what we want to do for the most part, it's critical, is let me calm down. I'm a little pumped up to be on, on Zoom. <laughs> what we're going to do for the most part is look at the Olmec. And if you want to see the largest collection of Olmec heads in the world, it's in this museum right here, which is in Jalapa, Mexico, the Anthropology Museum. And these are the pieces that you see. This, for example, is one of the best of the old Mac heads. This one is called El Rey. El Rey means the king. And this is in that museum in Jalapa. You can see some foliage in the background because the old Mac civilization, unlike the Nile Valley civilization or the civilization of Mesopotamia or the Indus Valley civilization or the Yangtze River civilization in ancient China, this was not a civilization on the banks of rivers. This was inland, and there's a lot of foliage there. So this is a magnificent piece right here. And here it is again, all by itself. This is about 20 tons. And this, we think, is about 3,200 BC. The heads that I'm showing you first are called the San Lorenzo heads. There are 20 of these massive Olmec heads, all with African features, some extremely African if there is such a thing. And you have, they are from four different places. The first 10 are from a town called San Lorenzo, possibly the first town or city in the Americas. The next seven are from a place called La Venta. And then you have two from a place called Trezapotes and one from a place, a plantation actually, called Cobata. This is another of the big San Lorenzo heads. And then you get to the smaller ones. Now these are actually in that museum. Now, no two of these look alike. They all have their own unique features, but each and every one of them is made of hard stone. This is solid stone, it's not hollow. And it has what appears to be a kind of a headgear or helmet on the top. This one is interesting too. I could show you another photograph and I will if I have time, where you can see the brown paint uh, still there. So not only do the heads have the features of African people in terms of lips, cheekbones, noses, but apparently at least some of them, if not all of them, were painted brown. I have to say all these things because there are many people, probably even Facebook trolls, heaven forbid, listening to this session right now, who would argue that these Olmec heads are not African. And this has been a debate for more than 100 years. Well over that. The first person to identify one of these heads was in fact a Mexican scholar named Jose Melgar. In the 1860s, he found one of these heads, I'll show it to you in a moment, and he referred to it as Ethiopian. And then from 1920 to 1922, a Polish American scholar at Harvard University named Leo Wiener wrote a three volume book called Africa and the Discovery of America. Wiener didn't know who these heads represented. He thought they might be athletes or slaves. And other people have done good work, but the greatest work of them all, of course, is my brother, our ancestor, Ivan Van Sertima. This is one of my favorite heads. Now, Ivan, I think in 1976 or 77, wrote the book, 
that came before Columbus, the African presence in ancient America. And at the time he was able to identify 12 or 14 of their heads. I've been able to identify 20 of them. And I suspect that there are more. And this is one of the ones that Ivan never got to see. This is also in Jalapa. It appears to be badly damaged. And it also is interesting because it has on the back of the head what appears to be tassels or feathers. I'm gonna show you the famous one with the braids in the back in a moment, but all of them are unique. And these are the only two, and I've seen all of them, that have anything on the back of the head. This is another, this is another relatively new one in terms of discovery. They're numbered, I think that this is San Lorenzo head number eight, and this is one of my favorites. This is another one weighing about 20 tons, perfectly preserved. And I have a personal history with this head. I've been take, I took groups to Mexico from 2015, I think 2014 to I think 2019, 2018, I'm not sure. And the focus of every tour would be the Olmec heads. To me, they're a big deal. I get excited thinking about them, okay? In fact, what I would like to do, God willing, if the virus passes away, I'd like to co-sponsor a tour with the World Bee Center for next summer to Mexico. I knew you would like that, Empress. <laughs> to see the old make heads of Mexico, I'm going to take you to see all 20 of them. Well, anyway, this was my first tour. And the woman who was organizing the tour, well, she was an African, but she wasn't very African-centered. And I had not been to this museum before. And I think she almost wanted me to flop for the museum to be closed or for us to run out of time or to have the wrong address or something. So I, I got off the bus before anybody else. I'm leading the tour, even though I've never been to this museum before. And I jump in there, go into the museum, and this is the first piece I see. And this head seemed to say, Brother Renoco, sit down and chill, my brother, and take a good look at me. Anybody who argues that the Olmec were not African, or at least the Olmec heads were not African, show them to me, show them my face. And then no matter what evidence you produce, no matter nothing that you say, if that doesn't convince them, nothing will. And so you can see I have a smug look of great satisfaction here. Another San Lorenzo head, and this is the last one. And this is the last Olmec head that I saw. This was number 20. And the reason it took me so long is this is way out. Two of the San Lorenzo heads are in the National Anthropology Museum in Mexico City. Seven of the heads are in the Anthropology Museum in Jalapa, Mexico. And this one is in the original location, way out in the town of San Lorenzo itself, which is a great distance. I had to get a car, a driver, pay a lot of money, but I got my man, I got my Olmec head. And there I am with it and another one of my famous plaid shirts like I'm wearing tonight. I, I founded, founded an organization called the Plaid Shirt Society. <laughs> Did you wear that in Peru? You were plaid. Peru. Are you kidding? Yes. <laughs> I put it on just for you, okay? <laughs> now this one, these are out of sequence, but it's cool. This takes us to another phase of the Olmec world. And the actual, the third phase of the Olmec civilization. You have three phases of the Olmec civilization. One is San Lorenzo, which we've talked about. The other is uh, La Venta, which we're gonna get to in a moment. And the third is Trezapotes. This comes from the Trezapotes head and the people who dug this up, it's 12 feet long, it's made of basalt, a very hard stone. They refer to it as El Negro. These are the Mexican peasants who dug it up, not the scholars. We have to constantly say these things because so many people would deny the African role in the world before slavery days. It's my argument that the worst crime you can commit is to teach a child that their history began with slavery. So this is El Negro and there I am with it. It's like an altar, it's kind of like a, a sphinx. Now back to La Venta. These are the La Venta heads, this is the head that was on the cover of Ivan Van Sertima's book that came before Columbus. And this one is estimated to weigh 40 tons. Okay. So there are four Laventa heads that have now been moved <clears throat> to an outdoors park 
in a place called Villa Hermosa <clears throat> in the state of Tabasco. Here they are. Here's another one. Some are better preserved, are better carved than others. I think this one is called the Young Warrior or the Young Prince. This is another of the good La Venta heads. And here's another one in the Anthropology Museum in La Venta. Now, there are three other heads that I'm the only person, for the most part, that acknowledges. These are the three battered La Venta heads. La Venta is in Mexico, obviously. And in the 1950s, even after the old make heads were detected, they found oil there. I think the company is Pimex. So they moved the four best heads to Villamosa. I just showed you those. And three heads were left behind in La Venta itself. And I don't know if they were, they were damaged or they were never finished, but you can see the shape. So there are three of these, you can see. And then finally, we get to the Tresapotes heads. Now this was the first head that was detected in I think 1866 or 1877, again, the scholar who dug him up is named Jose Melgar. His work has never been translated into, um, into English, it's still in Spanish. And he called it, he referred to the features as Ethiopian. And this is the second Trezapotes head. In some ways, these are the most impressive. And this is the one with the braids in the back, okay? And this is the last head, perhaps the least African looking of them all, maybe the youngest. It, he appears to have the eyes closed or he's squinting. And this is at a place called Kobata. This is the Kobata head. And this one is estimated to weigh 100,000 pounds. It's in the Socalo, the city square in um, Santiago, Tuxla, Mexico. Let me show you some, a few other pieces from the Olmec world. This one. This one looks just like Lawrence Fishburne. He could have posed for that, Matrix. Here's what is called an Olmec goddess or an Olmec queen. There are very few images of women in the Olmec world. This one, a lot of these pieces, most of them in fact, are from my visits to the museums around the world. This is in the Metropolitan Museum of Art in New York City. This one is in Princeton. This one is actually in La Venta Park in Mexico. And this is called the Watcher. And it appears to be a man looking up at the sky, obviously looking up at the sky. And so scientists have deduced from this that the Olmec also had a knowledge of astronomy. This is called the Watcher. An Olmec tomb. And you can see how the lords or nobles or kings of the Olmec were buried with these massive basalt slabs. Other artifacts in the Olmec world. I'll go through these quickly. This is in Brussels, Belgium, back in Princeton, back in Mexico. This one I found in the um, National Museum of Santiago, Chile a few months ago. And this is Olmec. Look at the lips on these pieces. When I was growing up, I used to watch, and I, this may be a terrible thing to say, when I was growing up, I would see this uh, television show called The Adams Family. And there was a character in there named Lurch. And that's what this piece reminds me of. Yeah, I don't mean any harm. That, that does look like Lurch. All right. Um, I think I lost you for just a moment. We still, we still got you. Oh, you can still see me. Yeah, yeah, I see you and I still see Lurch. Okay. Are you able to see this piece? This we and these pieces. No, it's not moving. All right, let me just. Okay. How about now? No. no. It's 
Yes. Oh, there you go. Hey. All right. This I've never seen this piece. Go ahead no, and it's, either. It's a it's a beautiful piece of art. And this piece. Now this is in um a was in a museum in Barcelona. Whoa. And I saw it on my first trip to that part of Spain. I came back many years later and nobody could tell me whatever happened to it. Can you see the pyramid? This is the first pyramid in the Americas. Massive grass colored, I mean, grass covered pyramid. Um, it's only about a hundred feet high but it's the first pyramid in the Americas and apparently this was built by the old Mac. And then you have these images of black skin warriors in Mexico. Now, if you look closely, you can see that the hands are light colored or white. I'm not sure if those are gloves or their symbolism there. Sometimes blackness is ethnic and sometimes it is symbolic. If it's symbolic, what would blackness symbolize in the ancient world of Mesoamerica? Now, according to the museum captions, the color black represented wisdom in the underworld. But they don't say that these are black people. What they tend to say in the museums is that they covered themselves with petroleum. Now, these are called captives. And this is from a, the base of a temple in Mexico, about 1500 years old. And you can see a series of black men. The one in the front has a broadsword, but they are identified as captives, but they are not bound. And if you look back here, you see two lighter skinned figures with what even looks like a kind of um, an ankh. Here's a detail and yet another. And so my point is, even if people were to dispute the African roots of the Olmec, there are many other images of the African in, in ancient Latin America as well. So let me just go through the rest of these quickly. This is one of my favorite pieces right here. A beautiful terracotta. I, I mean, I love it. It's small enough to fit in your hand and there's no caption with it. It's just hanging up in a glass case in a museum. Now, I want to spend a little time talking about the Maya, and this takes us to that phase. Now, what this shows is an image, it's a Mayan stella, a relief. And it, there are figures on the bottom, and what is on the top appears to be an Olmec head. The Maya were the successors of the Olmec. And this would appear to be, um, a, I'm interpreting it like this now. This would appear to be a tribute from the Maya to their Olmec predecessors. Now these are Mayan pieces, are from the civilizations that come after the Olmec in Mexico and Central America. This is a black figure, but he seems like he's also merged with mythology. You can see the claws of a bird and you can't see the feet here, but the feet, are, he has the feet of a bird. And I think this might be merged with the mythical deity Quetzalcoatl, who was also identified with voyagers and in the form of a bird. Now this is classic Mayan. And this is about 1500, <clears throat> 1500 years old. And it's a black skin warrior. In fact, a series of black skin warriors on a Mayan bow 1500 years ago. Black skin warriors going into battle. Here's another. Here's another example. Now, Ivan Van Sertima didn't say that the Olmec were African. He said there was an African element in the Olmec world. And for a time, they were the hierarchy. Now, I'm using this one in a similar way because you can see a contrast here between a black-skinned Mayan and a, a red-skinned Mayan, for lack of a better word. And so they definitely knew racial or symbolic distinctions. Now here's something interesting too. You have many images in the Mayan world with the lips very light colored and sometimes the hands. 
which would give me pause and make me wonder again if it's ethnic or symbolic. If they were not black, if they were not African, but they used the color black to symbolize something of great significance. But the figure in the black in the back is all black. And there's none of that color symbolism there. I guess my point is so much history is yet to be written. We start to wind down, we're gonna look briefly at South America and we're done. This is from Peru. And this is from the formative civilization of Peru called the Moche. And look at this one. This is in the Rafael Herrera Museum in Lima, Peru. And all of these are in that same museum. Now, what do we make of these? And again, you can see that the black figure is not uniform, but sometimes you see black people among a larger collection like the head here in the center. I got these on my last trip to South America, which was in Peru this time last year. This is, I believe, Aztec. This takes us to Costa Rica a tattooed black woman back to Peru. And again, among the Moche. And this is my newest book. This is the book I was telling you about. And this book has a lot of the photographs in there. And so that's what I wanted to share with you now. Just want to remind the audience that this is the first of a three part series. The next part will be on African resistance to enslavement and injustice in the Americas, enslavement. And then the third part, we'll look at Africans in Latin America today. And so that's what I wanted to share with you. But the key is generating an interest so people want to know. And they see why what we're talking about is relevant. You know, if you, I spend a lot of time on social media and it's been very frustrating lately. It has so much emphasis has been on what this entertainer said and what this celebrity did. It's as though with all the challenges that we face in the world, we are still prepared many times to trivialize our situation. And what we wanna do is make African people and people in general see things in a different light. What we say all the time is what you do for yourself depends on what you think of yourself. yourself. And what you think of yourself depends on what you know of yourself. And what you know of yourself depends on what you have been told. We did more than play basketball. That's right. Well, we were more than rappers. We are better than that. Not to demean what these other sisters and brothers are doing. But we want to look at African people as the parents of humanity. We're going to look at African people as the forerunners of civilization. And then we're going to talk about the resistance of African people to enslavement. We are a great and mighty people, and we can never forget that. So. I say, I say. And, um, Anything else? Okay, well, everyone, we, we've we got a whole series. This, uh, next month is African Mexican History Month. And uh, Jose, uh, Jorge Gonzalez, which is an incredible uh, historian, will be uh, participating and we're gonna have some really fun here and just keep open, keep your mind open and, and know that No, sister, it's just that uh, yeah, I appreciate it. This is our, at least for me, my dry run. I think we, dry run. we did pretty good. You know, we I'm did. pleased with it. We were able to share a lot of information, and we just ask people to have an open mind. That's it. Uh, next time, we will talk about resistance to enslavement, and it'll be chapter two. So thank you for having me. appreciate the World Beast Center for keeping on, keeping on. And uh, until then. Yeah, you know, and I just want to say that 
we're going to go through some really strange times and we don't need to be, uh, there's other enemies beside us and you know the other side is really getting ready. So all of us need to be together. And we can have our differences, but you got to be, we got to come together through this whole, whole uh, racial pandemic, uh, health pandemic, you know? So yes, sir, yes. we're not, we're not going to argue about it. No. What we're going to do, we're not even going to worry about those people with closed minds. No. Because there are enough people with open minds who want to learn. Exactly. Yeah, we have them here, too. Uh, thank you, uh, Catherine Smith. Thank, thank you. She said, thank you. Uh, Abigail Je Je Jefferson, thank you. Uh, so, so very much love. And thank you, Brother Rashid. Uh, Johnny Ray. Nelson, loving this, Cecilia Al Alvarez, and those are my partners in Mexico that we're working on a science grant, and they're here, and they said, Good. thank you, and they said, amazing, you know, so you had a lot of beautiful people. Thank you, everyone here, and thank you, Mexico. Thank you, Latin America, you know, for hosting all of us there, and, and and for us, the research that we've been doing for years, we love you all, you know, and we, we are so honored to have Brother Renoko Rashidi, I mean, the, the giant, of, he's my giant, <laughs> historian. So thank you so much. Thank we'll you, my you sister. Soon. Thank see you. you soon. See you soon. You guys stay on and take a look at the calendar.